In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about using the text tool for basic text in Premiere. So the text tool is fairly new. It's only been in the last uh, couple major releases of Premiere, and it makes our life a little bit simpler um, for just small text. So uh, I've got my playhead at the beginning of my sequence, and I'm going to play this bit and decide exactly where I want that text. So I know I'm going to want it some, somewhere here in the first few seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and watch. All right, Dollface. What gives with the Jersey accent? So I think this would be a good place to throw in a little bit of text uh, to comment on what this guy is saying. So right after he says these words, I'm going to go to my text tool. I'm going to make sure that my visual layer is on. I'm just going to go right up into the program panel and drag a text box. And I'm going to type in my text. So by default, the text is always large, uh, white, and in Minion Pro, um, which is not going to fit a lot of instances. So I'm going to press Command A to select all that text. Then over my source panel, I'm going to go to my effect controls and make sure that this section that says text and then in parentheses, it will have the text that you've typed in. Uh, I want to make sure that that is expanded and all the other options are collapsed. So here are all your type options. So it may seem a little odd that we're editing the style of text in something called effect controls. But remember, this is video, and this is classified as an effect on video. So here we can change the font by typing in or choosing from a drop-down menu. So I'm going to change the font. For size, there's a few ways we can change it. We can click on this number and type one in, press enter. We can slide next to it so we can get exactly the size that will fit in the area that we want. Um, we can also change alignment here if we had multiple lines. And we've got our familiar buttons for things like tracking, kerning, etc. So if we keep scrolling down, we have op color options. So we have fill, stroke, and shadow all together, making this very easy to choose our options for text. So I'm going to go ahead and unshow that transform section because we're not going to talk about that in this video. I am going to go ahead and add some shadow. So anytime you get the color picker in Premiere, there's always an eyedropper. So I'm going to select the eyedropper and I'm going to eyedrop the frame around this window so that that becomes my drop shadow color. So I decided to do that because it'll look a little bit more natural and I'll already be sort of fitting the aesthetic um, of the rest of the frame. So if I click off of that, I can see that Nice soft shadow makes it a little bit more readable. It's a good size. I'm going to go with that. So it's down on your timeline. Now this has showed up. And it's going to be in a five second chunk. So five seconds is the default time for any uh, still images, text items, titles, things like that. If it doesn't necessarily have an inherent time, Premiere just assumes five seconds. If you're doing a project where almost everything is, for example, going to be in two second chunks, you could actually go in your preferences and change that so that everything comes in a default of two seconds that doesn't have an inherent time uh, rather than five. So I'm, right now, I've got my playhead right where I want the words to appear. So I'm going to play it until I want the words to disappear. So I'm going to press down on my sequence. I'm going to press the space bar. 
So I think right before the woman enters the screen, because she's going to take up space here, I'm going to go ahead and have that text disappear. So because my playhead is here, when I go to trim back, it will snap right to it. So I get a very exact editing. So that's a tactic you could use on anything, not just still images or text. Let's go back and play that. All right, doll face. What gives with the Jersey accent? Well, uh... All right, so I like the length, I like the placement. I'm amused by it. I call that win-win-win. So there are a couple other simple things that we can do with text without having to get into keyframing it or anything like that. So because text is an object on our timeline, we can put transitions on it. So I can make sure that's selected and hit Command D, and that will put the basic cross dissolves on it, which will soften it up. Excellent. The other thing that we can do is look at different transitions for this. So in your project panel, depending on the size of your screen, you might have to swipe over or press this arrow here. We go effects and then video transitions. Some of these work pretty well with type. I think personally the slide ones work really well. So I'm going to take a slide transition and I'm going to drop it on each half of my existing cross dissolve. And then I'm going to select each one. So this one at the beginning, let's play that and look, look at what it does. So that's a great way to get text to just slide onto your screen without having to keyframe it or anything. Now I wish it went a little faster. So I'm going to hover over the end of the transition and shorten it just a little bit so that it slides on quicker. All right, I like it. So I'm going to shorten the other side. So again, click right on the transition and edit it down a little. So on this end of the transition, I don't really want this white. Now that is sort of like the second type of transition that looks pretty good with type. However, I don't know. I don't like it with this. I really wish it would slide off. So again, making sure you have this transition selected. I scroll down here and click reverse in my effect controls. Now that will slide back off the screen. So let's watch this in context. Gives with the Jersey accent. Well, uh... So the slide in this case adds a little bit of comedic timing. Also because the slide means that it's not actually on screen until about here. It now feels a little bit late. So this doesn't look like a whole lot of time. It's, you know, less, probably less than a second. So I'm going to select the clip and trim it out just a little bit. And watching context. The Jersey accent. All right, I'm going to edit out just a little bit more. I still like the the timing of the slide on and slide off. What gives with the Jersey accent? Well, all right, I like that. So that's how to insert some simple text and format it, use some transitions with it, and edit it on your sequence timeline. If you want something like rolling credits at the end, like horizontally or vertically, that can be done through titles. And we'll get to that in another video.